Tens of millions of people are living in urban areas across the world. But have you wondered what makes these megacities habitable? Is it technology? Regulations? Or the community we form? The truth is, none of these would exist if we don't have a healthy ecosystem that provides us with fresh air, clean water, and food essential to our daily life. And biodiversity is fundamental to every functional ecosystem. Despite its importance, climate change and human activities are eliminating biodiversity at an unprecedented speed. The United Nations reported one million animal and plant species around the world are facing extinction, many within decades. In this episode of Manga Bay Explains, we are in California, and these three species will tell us why, when their future is at risk, so is ours. Salamanders are a type of amphibians. We'll see them marching across uh, roads and trails and through the forest, or you can find them in people's backyard. We know that amphibians are declining uh, globally. Since 2004, there's been a number of reports that listed more species of amphibians as being threatened, either critically endangered or vulnerable. Salamanders are incredibly important to ecosystems where they occur. And so what they're doing is actually having a, through their food chain, is having a direct impact on carbon sequestration. Because in places where you remove the salamanders, the invertebrate populations increase, then your accumulated plant matter sort of disappears. And that means that there's not as much carbon being sequestered in a system. Without salamanders, we're going to probably see an increase in the greenhouse gases that are causing climate change. In California, that means an increase in the frequency and intensity of wildfires. The river fire in Monterey County, for example, charred a quarter of Hastings Natural History Reservation in 2020, home to thousands of plant and animal species. Two years later, the fire's impact remains in the ecosystem. One of the biggest impacts of wildfire in these ecosystems is how it burns different food sources for different species. To conduct my research, I use camera traps and acoustic monitors to understand how different wildlife species are using burned areas versus unburned areas. We found that most uh, of the unburned areas have a lot more species present than in the burned areas. Climate change plus human activity is making these megafires more frequent and more common. And that can potentially do a lot of ecological bad to these environments. Yeah, acorn woodpeckers are a charismatic species. They're found throughout much of California. In the fall, when acorns are being produced by oak trees, acorn woodpeckers collect these acorns and store them. They make tiny little small holes. Each hole has one acorn in it. And an intense fire that hit Hastings in 2020 was so intense that when it went through, 
These majestic trees that are being used for storing acorns are burned up. This is a tremendous hit on an acorn woodpecker. There's no resources left. There's nothing for them to survive and they'll likely have to abandon the area. And there are a bunch of species in California that rely on acorn woodpecker holes for nesting and reproduction. People that live in a city may not notice. The ecosystem is providing oxygen to humans. If it's cleaning the air for us, if it's providing water and conserving water for us, these are all things that we're gonna lose as we lose species from this very important ecosystem. Pacific Grove is one of the largest overwintering sites for the Western monarch butterfly. Everything that you see around you is made to be a perfect habitat for monarch butterflies. Historically, there were estimated tens of millions of monarch butterflies that would come to California in the winter. But since the 80s, their numbers have decreased by 99%. Habitat loss, pesticides, and warming temperatures all contribute to the dramatic decline. 2020, there were no monarchs in Pacific Grove, none. They were this close to being extinct. And was it hard on us? Yes. I mean, somebody jokingly said, let's go to the groves and have a pity party uh, because there was none there. Uh, and we were very concerned, but it was not in a sense, a surprise. There are some indications that climate change is beginning to have some effect. Native plants and insects are co-adapted to each other. When we have drought, which is more common under the, the climate change model, that destroys the native plant population and therefore that environment is more hostile to insects and pollinators in general. If we lose those insects, we lose that food chain, all those good things that everybody likes to eat, they're not gonna have. How that will ultimately work out is both unknown and probably not predicted other than it will be very difficult for human beings in general. I feel like it's our responsibility in a way to make sure we're stewarding the land in a way that helps protect and conserve these species. Climate change is ultimately gonna affect everything in their environment. As the earth is heating and changing and becoming more extreme, California may look very differently in 100 years if we were to lose a major ecosystem. They're all part of this a network of interrelated species. And so it's just a matter of time that the impacts on one species will impact the other species that depend on it. Anything you do to help out the environment is going to help out monarchs. I mentioned that climate change, there are so many factors to take into consideration. The same thing with conservation. All of nature interacts together. So when you help protect nature, in any way, shape, or form, it is going to have like a feedback loop, just so many effects that are beneficial.